Hi, welcome to another Lemon Amiga gameplay review. This time we'll be focusing on the 1991 Sales Curve classic, Swiv. Swiv is a vertical shooter in the same vein as 1942 and Hybris and uh, was uh, coded as a direct result of uh, the original game Silkworm which was released in 1989 on the Amiga. The game starts uh, in an airport and you can select from either a, a helicopter or a jeep very much like Silkworm and uh, for this uh, review I'll be using the helicopter. As you can see the, uh, the gameplay uh, is very uh, straightforward, basically you are a helicopter uh, and the aim is to destroy as many enemies as humanly possible using your limited array of uh, firepower missiles uh, of which we'll see more later on. This first level starts in a, in a ghost town uh, in, in the west and uh, you can see uh, an array of enemies will attack you from uh, all different directions over the, the course of the game uh, including trains, helicopters, uh, tanks of all descriptions, uh, mega, uh, mega lasers um, so in this first section of the game it begins quite easy uh, even though uh, you really do have to know where all the enemies come from so that you can dispose them and sooner or later you come across one of these uh, which is a, an enemy ship um, which contains a selection of power-ups. The, uh, the red V's create a side shot and uh, the yellow icon creates a, a bullet speed up. So I picked up two side shots and a speed up and as you can see gameplay is now much faster. It's now much easier to dispose of the, the enemies uh, or at least it would be. Uh, but when you die, you will uh, lose an upgrade state and I've died once, I've lost one side shot and I've also lost the ability to fire rapid fire and I've died yet again and that means I lose yet another upgrade uh, which means I have to play normal fire So let's speed this section up uh, a little bit just to get us through uh, the, the shanty town so that we can move on to the uh, the later sections of the game uh, one of the nice features is that when you blow up a tank the, uh, the crater which which remains uh, gives you a nice artifact that you have at least destroyed something on screen uh, and on levels with lots of tanks uh, that uh, can make some pretty interesting uh, level design um, scattered throughout the levels you'll find uh, a bubble which you can either blow up or uh, jump into. If you blow the bubble up it gives you um, a destruct uh, smart bomb effect which blows up everything on screen or if you climb inside the bubble it gives you a, a temporary shield which you can use to uh, dispose of your enemies. The, uh, the good thing about the shield is uh, you can literally rampage through your enemies without uh, fear of death and uh, here comes another one uh, in fact there on this section there's a pair of shields it's helpful to get the first one straight away so that it gives you the protection and then when the uh, when this gunship appears which gives you the, uh, uh, the weapons upgrades which is called a goose you can then go into the uh, enemy with a, a full shield so that it means that you can get as many weapons as possible. You usually find a, a shield um, as the goose appears and it's just a matter of picking up the, uh, the upgrades to match the scenario. As you can see already the uh, scenery has changed now we're on to uh, an Egyptian level you can see I'm passing a number of pyramids there and the enemies change as well now we have uh, alien technology uh, on the radar uh, some of these things are best avoided like those uh, like those red circles there if you fire those they will fire uh, a, a barrage of uh, missiles in all different directions so you 
mostly better off leaving those unless you have a shield and uh, as you continue through the levels you will find the levels become not only more difficult but also more interesting uh, with uh, a much more varied uh, array of enemies. Now I've chosen to play this level as the helicopter which is the easiest because the helicopter can literally fly above all the uh, all the terrain uh, of the level. If you, if you want to play as the jeep on the other hand you'll find that you have to negotiate the, uh, the obstacles on the level uh, at ground level and uh, this makes the game much more difficult as you can imagine and if you decide to play as two player as both the helicopter and the jeep then this makes the level much easier as you can imagine because now you have twice as much firepower. I've just picked up the uh, firepower upgrade and at some points of this game it's all about knowing when to move into the action uh, and similarly knowing when to avoid the enemy's firepower as well. It's all very well waiting into the action with all guns blazing but if that means going into uncertain or otherwise death then there's no point in really doing that. You might as well save a life and progress much, much more easily. The game really does open out once you have a significant number of weapons upgrades as you can see and it makes the game so much easier. Uh, and not about the firing mechanism, uh, this game doesn't benefit from auto fire. As you hold down the fire button, uh, you'll find that there is a built in auto fire mechanism to Swift. Uh, and if you engage auto fire on the joystick, it's actually slower than the built in mechanism in the game. So the coders really do make allowances for auto fire and it becomes a, a necessity uh, to play this game with auto fire otherwise you can forget it. The, the simple uh, number of enemies re requires auto fire as standard. So we're moving through the desert level now, we're uh, approaching the end of the desert level uh, and periodically through the game we'll find uh, a number of bosses which are huge mechanisms which take uh, quite some time to uh, wipe out and we're just approaching the first uh, of those uh, bosses right now which is um, a huge machine with uh, a massive forward firing laser uh, stuck out in front of it and getting in the way of this laser will of course mean sort of death which is something you don't want to do. So let's speed our way through this uh, boss. Uh, it's a simple matter of moving from the left to the right to defeat the uh, uh, ball firing uh, objects that appear from the sides and uh, if you have spread shot like I have uh, getting rid of the main gun isn't much of a problem as long as you maintain timing to make sure that you don't get hit by the major laser. And then you'll notice the screen changes again. This time we're heading towards the uh, the airport, which is a, a, a simple landing strip. And uh, again, uh, just in case you were running out of uh, weapons, the game gives you another uh, goose uh, craft so that you can select some more. But as you can see there are so many enemies on screen that I've actually picked up uh, an incorrect or inappropriate weapon. That's the, uh, that's the blue icon which uh, gives you concentrated fire and at this stage of the game concentrated fire is definitely not something which is advantageous especially when you're looking at this helicopter which fires a uh, hundred tiny little ships out into your direction and concentrated fire just means you don't have the spread available to uh, to take on this onslaught. Uh, I'm dying pretty rapidly now with this uh, downgrade uh, weapon um, because it simply doesn't give you the range and the spread or the rapid fire to take on this many enemies uh, so the key to this game is literally not dying and then you'll have the weapons available to take on these enemies. Again if I pick up that shield it means I can fly directly into the enemies without fear of uh, death and uh, the, as the landscape is changing again to reveal the uh, uh, 
a C section beyond the um, beyond the airstrip, uh, you can see that the levels are varied and they do uh, change quite uh, quite rapidly from one scenario to another. Thanks to the uh, load system on Swift, the uh, the game uses a read ahead mechanism, so the uh, the next section of the game loads. As, uh, as you play in the previous section. For this reason there are no weight states, no load states at all whilst playing the game. Uh, the, the entire uh, play area scrolls like one huge level from beginning to end uh, and there are no pauses whatsoever which means the action maintains its thick and fast mechanism all the way through. And this is almost a unique aspect to Swiv, really the, uh, the way the game uh, preloads the the levels is nothing short of genius, and uh, very few games uh, use this uh, mechanism. And as you can see, uh, I am now trying my best to destroy another weapons upgrade, uh, which isn't made any easier because now the levels are, are full of uh, traps of all different kinds. You see floating mines there, and this helicopter which fires a rake of bullets in our way which are best avoided and if you're playing the jeep at this point you will notice there's no solid surface uh, on the level so this requires the, uh, the player to jump into a boat um, from the jeep and the jeep will now play as a boat player on this level uh, to enable the player to uh, negotiate the level uh, and as you can see some more helicopters firing a lot more uh, miniature different types of spacecraft which is again fine if you have plenty of firepower so you can waste these guys but not really uh, advantageous if you have medium uh, firepower like me you can see the the jeep there at the bottom corner the after the the jeep player reaches the other side of the lake the uh, the jeep player will then jump straight back into the jeep and continue on the way whereas the helicopter doesn't have that problem uh, and this level in particular uh, is a, a direct imitation of uh, a particular level on uh, a C64 game, which I used to play, uh, called Exevious, uh, or if anybody's played uh, Flak uh, as well. Uh, all these were used as inspirations for this game, but uh, definitely Exevious here is the, uh, is the master inspiration for this section. Anybody who's played that game will be certainly familiar with these um, with these blocks that are coming down the screen uh, which deflect bullets uh, which you have to negotiate. On this section it's, it's vital to avoid the bullets to be honest rather than uh, take on the enemies and then the scenery changes again from the meadow we're heading on into the uh, into a field of uh, wheat it looks like and um, Very reminiscent of the uh, English countryside. You can see uh, a UFO there. When that takes off, it reveals a crop circle. Very nice um, nod towards the uh, crop circle um, conspiracies there. There's, there are a lot of uh, jokes in this game. Uh, for example, uh, at one stage you will travel down a ravine full of uh, shopping trolleys shopping carts. Uh, on another section you will find uh, igloos on the uh, the snow section, things like that. You might be reminded of uh, a, a game called Banshee as well which also came later. And um, we come to the final section of this game which I'll show you. We've just come up to the 15 minute YouTube barrier. So you really do need heavy, heavy firepower by the time you get to this section. Not so much to avoid the, uh, the bullets because these flying orbs are really easy, but uh, when it comes to being attacked by um, all kinds of uh, hover ships uh, coming up, as well as the goose, as well as everything else, then the whole screen becomes very hectic indeed. Uh, you will find the, the levels increasingly more difficult. So, thank you for uh, viewing the play review guide to Swiv. I've only completed 42% of the level. Hope to see you completing the other half.